Hey guys, what is going on today? Bojo here, and welcome back to episode number three of our Montreal Canadiens franchise mode here in NHL 19, where today we're going to be continuing our simulation through year number one. We actually may very well get done our simulation of year number one. If not, it's definitely going to be a shorter episode than the previous because I may only take it a couple months or so until the trade deadline before we actually start deciding what to do with some of the players on our team. But if you guys would not mind, make sure to drop a like on that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. If you missed episode number two or number one, the links for that will be down in the description or at the end of the video. So make sure to go check that out. And also make sure to go check out intimateam.com. Use code BOJO for 10% off your entire order. All right, so where do we sit right now? Currently 17, 22, and two. I simulated up a couple of days because uh, we're going to be doing some looking at the draft class and my scouting in a second, but 17-22 uh, is where we stand currently, which is good enough for last place in the Atlantic Division, not last place in the entire NHL, though. There's still a couple teams that are doing worse than what we are doing, but we kind of established that this Montreal Canadiens team is definitely not going to be a playoff team, so that's why we have now put Max Pacioretty onto our trading block along with Carl Osner and along with Andrew Shaw. And possibly Jeff Petrie could be moved as well at this year's trade deadline. So, going over some comments from the last episode, guys. I'm going to be doing this a lot, so make sure you guys leave your comments down below. A lot of the most best thumbs up comments will definitely be featured in the video. So, starting off with Azore, you shouldn't scratch Sherback. He's one of Montreal's best prospects and a top six in the game. You should scratch Delorier, put Byron on the fourth, and have Sherback on the third. Okay, so... My reasoning for not playing Nikita Sherback as much as I have been is because in previous games in NHL 18, whenever I have like a depth forward, for instance, I always have really good luck when, uh, why is he near? Is he scratch? Okay, he's scratch. I always have good luck when he's not particularly playing every single game. Like if you take a look at Nikita Sherback's games, he's only played one game so far. But his overall has already jumped up to a 79 overall. So, I mean, and he currently is no longer a depth forward. He's actually a third line scoring line forward. So that overall boost has indeed pushed him over the edge. So you know what? I will oblige with you guys right now. I will definitely make that change for sure. Uh, I don't know who I should change. Probably Paul Byron, right? Yeah. So I should probably put Paul Byron down here. The Laurier will definitely get scratched. And Nikita Sherback will go into the right wing spot. Okay. So... That, that was my reasoning for it, is because like in NHL 18 when I played franchise mode, when I had a depth forward and he was comfortable being a depth forward, I just let him be a depth forward. Maybe every now and again he would get like a couple games in the season and then his overall would just crazy jump at the end of the year. And you know what? It seems to be working for Nikita Sherback. But he is indeed a third line scoring forward now with that overall boost up from a 78 up to a 79 now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put him onto the ice and uh, play him on the third line next to Houdon and Lekkonen pretty much for the rest of the year. And we're going to see how uh, well he does. So uh, Deloria will take a little bit of a seat. Paul Byron will move down to the fourth. And that's pretty good. I think uh, I'm glad we made that change. I'm glad we take a, took a look at it. And uh, thank you for that comment, Azori. All right, so I'm just going to put a bunch of comments up on the screen right now. If you guys do see your own comments, uh, make sure you say hi to yourself. But a lot of the comments in the last video were definitely in response to the a large variety of different trades that we got, most specifically the one from Toronto for uh, Kapanen and Dursey and a couple picks, as well as the one from the Philadelphia Flyers for that Felipe Myers deal. So a lot of you guys were saying that the Myers deal, both that Myers deal and the Kapanen deal were actually pretty decent. And a lot of you guys also were saying, at least uh, one comment mentioned it, that a lot of these teams might be offering me more for Carl Osner because the fog of war may not only affect myself, it might affect other teams. They might be valuing uh, Carl Osner a lot higher than what some other teams did. But like I said, we put uh, Max Pacioretty onto our trading block last episode, so we're going to wait a little bit. Because of our record, we definitely are going to be somewhat in the running for the first overall pick this year, and so far it looks like this guy, Ty Westcott, a power forward so far playing in the USA West is kind of top of the board right now. He's got 51 points so far in 32 games played as a power forward, which is pretty damn nice. 
Uh, size, skill, 200-foot game, puck protector. No weaknesses currently at the moment. A Sean Couturier, similar style. Now, that is just speaking right to me. 6'4", too, so he's a big-bodied center. Montreal loves and needs centers because a bunch of you guys were also saying that I should definitely either get a center in the draft or trade Max Pacioretty for a center. That way, we can move Jonathan Drouin back to his natural position at wing. So hopefully, we will be able to possibly be in the running for Ty Westcott or... Maybe even uh, Gabriel DeLuca, who's playing in uh, the Dell League right now. He's also uh, an elite potential player. Currently, the second overall uh, slated pick of Vladimir Tarasenko. Similar playing style as a two-way forward, which is interesting. But uh, Bowen Byram is also up here. I've drafted him a couple times, so I kind of know what his potential is. Uh, Jody Hole or Howell is up there. And then you get a bunch of the repeat guys in here, like uh, Capo Kako, you know, is in there. Kirby Dach, or Dak, however the heck you say it. Peyton Krebs is up there. Uh, that guy's new. Michael Vukovic up there as well. So, a bunch of guys that we still haven't scouted particularly yet. But uh, I'll definitely make sure to uh, send, this, send the guys out who I want to. I changed some regions around and some players. But hopefully we are able to uh, lock down most of the players that we are going to be uh, looking at let's get sitting let's see if some teams come at us with any trades possibly for max patch already i'll definitely evaluate it if they come in but i'm definitely going to take it roughly two weeks before the trade deadline hits here in uh the beginning of march and we will see where our team is going to be sitting at hopefully no injuries so i don't want to do too much micromanaging in this episode ryan paling has been injured with an injured elbow january 24th that's fine he's going to be going to be out for a couple weeks slemko has pulled groin all right that's fine replace the players we should be sitting pretty with those guys. We have players to replace them. Oh, Carey Price has been injured with a back injury, January 21st. Also, you guys are wondering where Charlie Lindgren went. And your guess is as good as mine, to be perfectly honest. I'll I'll just send up Caden Primo for the time being because he doesn't have to go through waivers. Miami will be in there for a couple of games, and we should be good. Price will be back on the 21st, so he's only going to be out for a week. Niami should be able to lock it down. Caden Primo will get some time. Yeah, see, so he's already back already. Let's take a quick look at Nikita Sherback as well, see how my, how well he's been doing. No points in eight games played, minus six. Well, I mean, he's getting the time, I guess. Okay, well, it looks like we have been revisited by a familiar team. However, Alsner and a second round pick this time for Phil Myers and two thirds. So, it looks like the Flyers have upped their trade value a little bit. They still want Carl Alsner. But this time they want a second for him and they want the pit and they want to give us two thirds in return. What I could do with this is I could edit the trade and kind of make it to what it was last time. I believe it was it was also in a fourth, right? Also in a fourth for Myers, correct? I'm going to see if I can fleece the Flyers on this trade, to be honest. I'll offer them. You know what? I'm going to offer them a uh, I'm going to offer them a six, to be honest. I'll give you guys my sixth over uh, my sixth round pick and also for Myers. Everything kind of seems Fair. If the Flyers take this deal, this would be pretty, pretty crazy, to be honest. Let's see if they do this. Alsner in a sixth for Myers. Trade rejected. Okay, so they don't want that. Alsner in a fifth for Myers. Trade rejected. Okay. Like I said, this is the trade they offered us at the middle of the episode number two, so this could go through. Alsner and the fourth round pick, which is property of the Calgary Flames, or Phil Myers. Trade rejected. Okay. Let's see if it's our pick now that makes the difference. Or if we kind of just lost out on uh, Phil Myers here. Alsner in a fourth for Myers. Trade rejected. All right. We kind of lost out on that deal. We got to hopefully wait and see if Ron Hextel will counter offer us again with a better deal. Maybe he'll resend that uh, offer that we that he sent us before. So for right now, it doesn't look like it. Uh, okay. Alsner in a third this time for the Jets' second and a third. And Spacek, I have not heard of this guy. Who is he? Uh, let's take a look. Looks like we got his potential lockdown. Michael Spacek, low top nine potential. Uh, only 14 points in 39 games played, probably for Manitoba. Uh, a center prospect, which wouldn't be terrible, but I think I don't. We don't really need center prospects because we already have Koka Niemi down in the minor league. So as much as I love this trade for the picks, like we literally get. We honestly get a second and spot check for Alsner, pretty much. Like, this trade is really good, like, for the pick-wise. I'm going to say no, because I, I... Unless Winnipeg has something else. Do you guys have, like, a defense prospect that I could maybe 
counter offer you in return? Because what's uh, spot checks uh, trade value at? His trade value is oof, it's like little to nothing to be honest. Like if you were to give me, I can't take Logan Stanley from them. Medium tops four. That would be really nice if I could take that. I could maybe take off the second in exchange for Logan Stanley. Or even like, well, Sammy Niku's low elite. Not sure about that, but Logan Stanley we know is medium top four. Could I take off like the second round pick and put Logan Stanley in? Let me see. If I put Logan Stanley in here and I take off instead of Spachek, I keep the second and we just flip flop thirds. Maybe I'll keep the second on here. You know what? You go big or go home, right? Go big or go home. Uh, yeah. So it was a twenty. Oh, so it was a twenty twenty third for next year. Um, but I think the second was for this year. Yeah. So I'll put a second for this year, a third, and Logan Stanley instead for Osner and a third. Uh, yeah. Trade rejected. I figured that. All right. I'm just gonna. I'll leave this for now. Like I said, I know I I don't like that deal because like I said, I want. I want somebody different than like a center prospect. I kind of want the uh, I kind of want the defensive prospect possibly. I'm gonna hopefully hold out here for either Philadelphia to call me back or Toronto to call me back. Maybe Winnipeg will call me back again. Um, wow, that's a hell of a trade. <laughs> a second Osner, a fourth, and Andrew Shaw. So we're getting rid of a ton of cap for Wa and. Chemiski or Chemlevsky, Kamalevsky, Chemlevsky. I don't even know these guys at all either. So this is probably Jeremy Wah. Yeah, Jeremy Wah. Low top four potential, 73 overall. Uh, he hasn't even played a game at all for San Jose's uh, AHL team, which is crazy. He hasn't played at all this year for them. Low top four. So you're getting your defensive prospect right there, and then you're also getting this guy. Sas Sasha Kemlevsky. I don't like this deal from San Jose either. I'm going to say no. Here we go, guys. Our first trade for Max Pacioretty and the Bruins of all teams are coming at us. A first round pick and Zach Seneshin for Max Pacioretty. Well, I wanted a first round pick and a pretty decent prospect. Low top six, Zach Seneshin, 71 overall, 32 points and 43 games played. Right wing. Two-way forward would pretty much exactly fill what Pacioretty's need would be. Like, I could add in Jacob Zaboral to this trade as well, possibly. I mean, I'll add him to the deal. They want him. They have the cap to take him. So, Pacioretty, Shaw, maybe a first Seneca and Zaboral. That's asking a lot, to be perfectly honest. But, like, that's the only other thing I would want with this trade, to be perfectly honest. So, I'll propose it. Boston probably says no. Yeah. I will revisit this also once again. I know this is probably annoying the living hell out of you guys, but like like I said, I'm waiting for the perfect deal. Osner in a fifth for a third and a fourth. No, I need potential prospects for Osner. Fourths, Del Rose a fifth. Adam Tambellini in a third. No, thank you. Uh, no, thank you, Ottawa. Osner in a fifth for a third. No, thank you, Detroit. I want a prospect in return for those players. All right, Schlemko's back. Okay. Nashville wants two first round picks for Max Pacioretty. That's pretty damn good. Now, if Nashville has somebody who I would be willing to take instead of the first round pick for next year, something of value of Nashville's first round pick for next year, I would maybe edit this trade up a bit. So the second the next year's pick is definitely more valued than this year's pick. So let's see if I can add in something else. Like I said, I think we need defensive prospects more than anything else. Uh, I'm not going to get Ekholm. Uh, I don't think I want this guy, uh, Frederick Allard. No, I don't want him. Do they have anybody like really, really good defensive prospect-wise? Yossi, Subban, Ellis, Ekholm. Nah, nobody that's young enough to really be good other than Alexander Carrier, but that's not great. Two first jump picks though for patches is good. But, like I said, I want, like, picks and a prospect. I don't want just, like, full picks for patches. Although, like I said, two first-round picks is good. I'm going to say no. We still have, like, a little over a month to uh, get some trades in. Alsner a fourth and a sixth for a third and a fourth. No, like I said, I want prospects for Alsner. Uh, a second and a fourth. You get rid of our second and a fourth. You get rid of Alsner for a first for next year. 
These are all next year's picks. Next year. You know what? Let me look at Nashville's like contract situation. Let me look at their contract situation before I pull the plug on this deal. Like, who do they have coming back next year? And like who's gonna be like done off of their team next year? Ellis is done after this year. Uh who else is done? Like of note. Uh Hartman. Rene's done after this year. He's 36. He could retire. He very well could retire or really, really regress. I think I'm going to do this trade, guys. I really think I'm going to do this trade. A first round pick next year. Take the chance that Nashville could very well not be as good next year because Pecorene is definitely getting older. And he could not, he may not even re sign with the Predators as well. They might not have enough cap space to do so. It looks like they have enough, but they might not have enough. And I get rid of a fourth. I had an extra fourth, which I'm already getting rid of. A second round pick, which doesn't really mean anything. We get a first round pick back and Carl Osner. I don't think I'm going to get anything better because I can't, don't think I'll be able to revisit those trades from Philadelphia and Toronto. So you know what? I think I'm going to take this trade. I'm going to take the trade and hope to God Nashville is a pretty bad team next year. I'm going to, I'm going to accept that trade. I think that's a really, really good trade. To be perfectly honest all right so we there's our first trade guys the Nashville Predators acquired uh, Carl Osner from us a second and a fourth in return for a first round pick next year and all those picks are next year's picks so we give away the second round a second round pick for us next year and a fourth round pick for us next year but we're taking the gamble that Nashville could very well not be a good team next year so let's go to our trading block now and we're gonna add Jeff Petrie now to the block we still have Pacioretty left don't forget, we can still get those really good prospects in return for that, but I am now going to add Jeff Petrie to the trading block as well. He still has a very, very good bit of value to him, and honestly, three years at 5.5 is a little bit too much for an 82 overall, so I think we're going to see um, what we can get for him with the little bit of time we have left till the uh, trade deadline comes by. So, uh, let's continue to simulate here. Hopefully, we have a couple more days. I think I'm going to go a week before. So we still have like a couple of weeks before to get some trades coming in our way for these players. Uh, Jordy Ben and a third for a third and a fourth. No, I'm going to say no to that. Even though Jordy Ben wasn't being played. Could have got an extra pick for him. Uh, Max Pacioretty. Oh, this is almost exactly what I wanted. This is almost exactly what I wanted. Did I not just like try to make this trade earlier on in the video? And now it has come true. Patches and Petrie to the Bruins for Zaboral, a first, a second, a first next year though. It's not a first this year. A first, a second, Senishin and Zaboral. I'm going to edit this trade. If I can make the Bruins give me that first round pick for this year instead of next year, I will 100% do this, do this trade. Because I think, why would they not want to give away their first for this year? That's very, very odd to me. It's a little bit more value, I can, I guess I can see, but... I would take off that and I would add this. I'll take your first and your second for this year. Uh, yeah. So first add that in. Like if they were to do that and then maybe I add in just an extra little incentive pick. Like once again, I have an extra fourth I could give them because I'm going to be a pretty bad team. So I could add in that extra fourth to make sure that I get the first round pick for this year and the second. But this is almost exactly what I wanted in the uh, original trade. I get a medium top four potential defenseman in uh, Jake Zaboral, and I also get like a low top six potential player in Zach Senishin. So the Bruins, those two uh, like back to back to back draft picks that they took, they're trading two of them away in order to get Pacioretty, who's going to be a rental player, and Jeff Petrie, who they're going to be stuck with for at least two more years with a very terrible contract. Like our that I'm all up for this and honestly their record isn't all too great I mean 29 20 and 5 is still a decent record I don't know where they are ranked in the Atlantic division but like this is honestly a really really good trade I might even move up that fourth to a fifth because I'm getting the second round pick as well so honestly I this could be a perfect trade right here Pacioretty Petrie and a fourth or to the Bruins for Zaboral a second a first and Zach Senishin Will this go through? Trade rejected. Uh, sweeten it just a touch. Okay. I can do that for you guys. I will take off the fourth because I'm getting the second. And I will put in my third. So I get two firsts 
and two seconds. I wouldn't have a third, but I can probably get a third for maybe... Um, I can maybe get a third for Shaw. I could probably get either a third or more for Andrew Shaw so I can get that third round pick that so, back. And they want this third anyway, so... Here we go. Zaboral, a second, a first, and Seneshin for Pacioretty, Petrie, and a third round pick. Trade accepted. I'm happy to say that your calendar proposal is still in line with the objectives of the Boston Bruins, so we accept. I'm glad to see you appreciate the fine art of trade negotiations. There we go, boys. A blockbuster trade going down with one of our biggest division rivals. The Boston Bruins have acquired both Jeff Petrie and Max Pacioretty, but we get Zach Seneshin and Jacob Zaboral and a first and a second in return for all that. I feel like that is a huge get for our team. Although the potentials probably could have been a little bit better, to be honest. Uh, still, those are huge, huge pickups for our team. 100%. So I don't think we need to make any more uh, like line adjustments here. I think Domi can get moved up to uh, that top line. A bunch of you guys were saying to move Lekkonen up. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to move Sure back up. Because I think he has really good potential. Right? Medium top six. Yep. We're going to move Sure back up. I'm going to move Shaw back up. And that means I think, uh, do we have anybody scratched? Delorier can go back in because I will uh, send Zach Senishin more than likely down. And then defenders, we just have to move Schlemko up. And we can put in Jordy Ben, which is good. Substituting all lines for him. And then we go to roster moves because I don't think Zenishin, Senish, Senishin and Zaboral need to go through waivers because then we can get them on our AHL team right away. No waivers for Jacob Zaboral, which is awesome uh, under the team salary cap. I can scratch the Laurier and I could put in Senishin. Uh, he's technically a minor league scoring forward, but 71 overall in the bottom pair. Yeah, I'll put Zach Senishin on there on the fourth line. Why not give him some starting time? And then you know what? I could scratch Jordy Ben as well, and I could put uh, Zaboral in there as well. You know what? Let's just get these guys some NHL time while they're up here. Because I don't want them not playing, and I can't send them down because I'm well under the cap. So you know what? They might as well get some a uh, little bit of NHL experience under their belt as well. But damn, that's a pretty damn good trade, if I do say so myself. So we made some pretty decent trades, honestly. We picked up, I think, two first-round picks, a second, and two really good prospects for... Osner, Petrie, and Pacioretty. So, honestly, that's some really, really good uh, work that we did there. And maybe I'll put Weber on the block next year to see, depending on how good of a team we are. Other than that, I don't think there's anybody else we need to do. Nope. So, it's just Shaw, and then, you know what, for kicks and giggles, we're just going to throw Price on the block just to see what we can get for him. <laughs> I should put both Price and Weber to see if any team will honestly take his contract. But, there we go. We made two really good huge acquisitions there boys two really huge acquisitions and i think i'm going to continue sim uh continue recording here i'm going to go a day before the trade deadline and i'll see if any team is interested in andrew shaw and i could probably more than likely pick up a third round pick for him to get that third round pick back that i traded to uh the bruins but yeah let me know what you think of those trades down below so we pretty much gave away what did we give away in total we gave away um oh Zach Senishin has been injured with a mild concussion. There you go. Deloria gets right back in there. He gets NHL time and he gets concussed right away. Oh, he's back. Uh, a third for next year, a fourth for this year, and Jacob De La, De La Rose for Vitaly Abramov. Abramov will progress quicker than De La Rose will, but De La Rose has, I think, been having a really, really good year in the AHL. Well, not particularly. 20... <sighs> But see, like, I have De La Rose on the top line with Paling, and I think he's helping out Kokon and Niemi as well get put good uh, good potential, so, or have him progress quicker. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no to this, Columbus. I like the deal. I don't think so, though. I'm going to say no. Uh, Jordy Ben in a fourth for a fourth and a fifth. Jordy Ben being played on our team at all? I don't think he is. So we get a fourth for this year and a fifth for this year. We get rid of the fourth for next year. Two more picks in exchange for Jordy Ben, who was not even being used on our team at all. Sure, Dallas. I'll take that. I will take that. Jordy Ben was not even being used on our team. He was literally a healthy scratch. So we pretty much just trade away a fourth and a healthy scratch for uh, a couple of picks there, which is awesome for this year. So we get more picks to potentially get some studs in the draft. Uh, a third, De La Rose. Fifth and a sixth for that Kemlivsky guy again. I really don't know about this guy. If San Jose sends this trade again before, like, the trade deadline pops, um, I might potentially scout him 
and I'm gonna go to the day before I'm gonna go to this Jersey game and I'm actually gonna take a look at that guy from San Jose as well just to see uh, wow, Boston's placing Matt Grizzlick on waivers. Would I like to claim him? I'm just taking every single Bruins player I could possibly get. Medium top six? Hello? 25? Uh, yes. Whoops. Hold on. I almost hit decline. Yes. Grizzlick. He hasn't played at all this year. Hello? Get him on my team. Yes. Absolutely claim him. I'm claiming the living hell out of Grizzlick. Are you kidding me? Whew. That is a huge get for our team. Third or fourth and De La Rose. A second for, and Dmitry Solokov, oh wow, or Sokolov, that's a good deal. I don't know what Sokolov's uh, potential is, but I know he's decent in the game. Uh, he's got 12 points in 55 games though, not great. Seventh round pick, he's got decent potential. Forward line four. He's playing on the fourth line in the AHL, uh, that's probably why he's not going to make points. Uh, once again, give away more picks to jump up picks again. Minnesota is killing it this year. They're 40, 19, and 4. I'm going to say no. Like I said, I, I think I value Jacob De La Rose a little bit too much because uh, uh, he's helping out our prospects do well. So let's go to uh, let's go to trade players because I want to take a look at that guy from San Jose. All right, so let's take a look at that guy where he may be at. Kemalevsky. There he is. Ooh, wow. Is he really elite potential? Did they want just like picks and De La Rose for him? Like, I really don't need center prospects because I have Coconut Yemi. Even if he is medium elite, I'm gonna say no to that. Yeah, I, I still I still think I'll stay away from that trade for the time being, but uh, yeah. So honestly, I think we're pretty good here. What's the uh, Lavelle Rockets record? 27, 30, 23, and six. So they could still use a, a little bit of a boost. Um, hopefully they'll be able to make playoffs at this current time, but I think I'm going to call it right here, guys. We did a really, really good uh, bit of uh, trading in this episode. Like I said, I think it was pretty good. You can let me know uh, how I fared in my trades because I'm not really the most greatest person when it comes to trades and franchise mode, but I still think we did a pretty banger job of making those trades and getting some stuff done. We still have a couple more days left for the trade deadline to pop, so if you remember those trades that were sent to us from a bunch of those teams, uh, definitely let me know in the comments section. We could possibly still make something happen but taking a look at our points total so far they're not great drew wins only at 39 points uh through 62 games which is not great don't think we're gonna have many high point totals on this team uh armia has had a really really good season though not gonna lie uh kind of underrated for an 80 overall 32 points he's gotten a lot more than i thought he would Four, 14 goals which is nice uh Lekinen, gallagher dano uh, plecanics on the fourth line has got 27 points uh, Domi only with 26 points, so he has not really produced all too well this year. But once again, his line mates haven't been great. And Sherbeck, uh, Sherbeck has four points now in 22 games after being the after getting the call up. And Senesha has honestly been killing it. Three points in uh, six games, honestly, has he's been killing it right now. His shooting percentage is 22%. Maybe I should move him up the lineup. Goaltender's price 23-20.920 is still really good to be honest. Goals against average is not great. Niemi has sucked the butt. Pretty much for the rest of this entire year but price is still not a terrible record but it's honestly not his fault it's the team in front of him has not produced all too well but uh yeah i think we're pretty much good here um i'm going to simulate i think one more day ahead to the day of the trade deadline and more than likely i think we're gonna see if we can make a trade here um in the next episode for andrew shaw uh a third, a fourth for Gabriel Carlson. Is Gabriel Carlson good? Low top four, possibly high 70s overall. Oh, that's another trade that you guys can definitely uh, look at because Jacob De La Rose has a lot of value to him from a lot of teams, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to exit that for right now. I'm going to say no to that for the time being. But uh, there's another trade that you guys can add to the list of... Uh, things we could possibly redo again but before we go i'll just show you guys exactly what picks we are looking at for uh the next couple of years drafts and all the things that we acquired in this episode obviously we got the first round pick from the boston bruins and the second round pick and uh in the trade with patches and petrie so we got those two picks in return for that we had to give up a third but we also picked up another fourth and a fifth with uh dallas in that trade for Jordy Ben, so we sent him off because we weren't really using Jordy Ben, so we pretty much like flip flopped force with the uh, Dallas Stars and picked up an extra fifth pick round pick in return. So we have 
three fists and three fourths, so we can honestly move a bunch of these, like, maybe high fourth round picks and move up in this year's draft to maybe get a third. Same thing with the fists, package together some of the fifth round picks into maybe, like, a another fourth round pick if there's somebody in the draft that we definitely want to pick up. And then also, don't forget, we picked up, we lost the second round pick for, ne for next year, but we also picked up that first round pick from the Nashville Predators in return for that Carl Osner trade. So remember, if we're going to be definitely keeping an eye out on the Predators next year to make sure that uh, and see how good of a trade that was for Osner. But like I said, picking up Seneshin and Zaboral, I think were re two really, really good trades for our team. I think 22 medium top four is a much better trade, to be perfectly honest, and also getting Zach Seneshin, who helps out a forward need, a winger need, getting rid of Pacioretty, and we pick up another kind of two-way forward in uh, Seneshin. Actually, he was a sniper, which is kind of something we need on this team. We need more snipers in and of itself. So. And as far as our team goes with the trade values, I think like the last thing that we need to do is hopefully try to flip Andrew Shaw is pretty much the last thing that we need to do, and hopefully you guys will evaluate all those trades that we got in this episode as well for um, Jacob De La Rose, and then maybe we can send something back to another team in order to get, but Andrew Shaw hopefully should be able to get us a third round pick more than likely in uh, this year's draft as well, and uh, I think we should be good. So another long episode for you guys as well, but it might be cut down very, very severely in this episode so that there's not as much unwanted stuff that we have to go through. But other than that, I thank you guys for watching. So next episode, we will definitely take it to the end of the season. I'll take a look at my uh, scouts once again, make sure everybody is scouting properly. And uh, next episode, we'll definitely just be kind of focusing in on scouting. And hopefully our AHL team will kind of kick it in the high gear. They might be able to make the playoff. They might be able to make a playoff push. Hopefully we will follow them. And uh, if they do make the playoffs, we definitely could send some players down to the, to the uh, LaBelle Rockets to get some playoff experience, and uh, hopefully we get it done. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. As always, let me know how I did with those trades down below. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.